had such an amazing career uh, and, and brought so many along here in the Northern California PGA section with your, with your mentorship and your leadership directly and indirectly. Uh, so please, some highlights of that career, please. And as a player, uh, as a player as well, not only here at, your, at Roundhill, but the great things you've accomplished as a player. You're putting a lot of pressure on me, man. <laughs> I, uh, I was never really a player. I tried to play, and every year, as a junior golfer, now I mean junior to our section, I tried to qualify for the Club Pro Championship. Every year, well, not every year, but an awful lot. I didn't even come close to qualifying to go back to Florida. Never, ever made it. And then I turned 50. And a lot of things happened then. The club went under new ownership, mainly meaning the members bought the club. And they wanted me to play more. Hard to turn that down. But it, it really stimulated my game. And I, I, I had one goal then, and that was to qualify for the Senior Club Pro Championship. I remember we were playing the golf course at Madeira, a nice course, and I played really well. I, it, it just fit my eye, everything was good. And I, I won the event. And I beat Ken Townsend doing it, you know. And I, Ken was an idol for me. He, he was just an absolutely great player. But that, winning that championship and, and qualifying to go back to Florida was tremendous because once I got back to Florida, then I, I made the cut and qualified for the National PGA Senior Championship, you know, with the big guns. And believe it or not, I made the cut there. And I may have finished 78, but I made the cut. Uh, I, I, I had a good run as a senior. You know, I, I won four. NCPGA Senior Championships. Um, I won, I take that back, I was player of the year four times. May have won it once or twice. But uh, I just, I had the opportunity to play. My wife was very instrumental. She gave me the free freedom to go out and play. She encouraged it. Uh, awesome lady. So, you know, I never really considered myself a player, but I was astounded to have played in seven senior major championships. Uh, six PGA senior championships and one U.S. Open senior championship. I only made two cuts. Uh, but I, I'll remember those forever. You know, you're playing against guys like Trevino and Nicholas, Paul, you know, that was fun. Locally, what I really enjoyed playing golf locally here at Round Hill was playing in the East Bay Golf League matches. I, I just loved that. I loved to go play. And, and it was great for my game to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I played in one I qualified for it and played in one PGA tournament, and that was the uh, old Dean Crosby. Qualified one year, qualified at Spyglass Hill, actually got in, and uh, it was quite, quite an experience. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, that's quite but, a uh, I, uh, I, I can't say much else about my game. Well, that's quite a bit. Congratulations on that, well, and uh, and having to take on and, and beat your fellow inductee Ken Towns is no small task by any means. All at once, and I'm sure he remembers that as well. He was he was wonderful. I mean, he he really was. He took me under his wing when we went back to Florida and, and really showed me what what was going on. I, I can't thank Ken enough. He he was a he is a great guy. Now, as we look 
uh, had a legacy, certainly here at Round Hill for 41 years, and everything that you've accomplished, and, and again, those that you've influenced. What, it, what is the meaning to you and your family to make it into, to be inducted into the Northern California PGA Hall of Fame? Well, we're, ec we're ec ecstatic. You know, I mean, really it is. It, it's a, it's a dream I never thought of, never ever considered the possibility of, of being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I, uh, if I can digress a little bit and go back 50 years, you know, go back to 1965, I was getting out of the service. I had spent a year and a half down in Fort Ord, and it's time to be discharged, and I get discharged, and it, it's in the fall of the year. It was in uh, like, uh, October 30th, 1965. And I decided I was gonna stay in California, down at Monterey, instead of going back to my home state of Minnesota. Well, two days, or no, that was the very night that I, that I uh, was discharged, I get a phone call from Tom O'Leary. He was taking over the job here at Round Hill on November 1, 1965. Yes. And it, it just, he said, now I need help. I, I don't have, I mean, he wasn't supposed to start until the first of the year, but things happened. And, and they told him to come in November 1. So he asked me if, if I would be available and come up, and I, I said absolutely. And so that was a break. You know, being available and coming to Round Hill, a, a really wonderful facility. And, and uh, during that time span, working, you know, up until I turned 50 was the big thing. And I've had so many young men, young kids come through working for me that when they come back today and say hi and remind me of the things that, that they did in the old days, that was tremendous for me. And it is tremendous still to this day. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it, it's wonderful, you know. Working here for for uh, 40 years, full time, 10 years part time. I had working for me four absolutely great people. My shop manager Greg Lamonica, my teaching professional Steve Yerke, my professional services man. Tom Holmes, wonderful man. And on the tail end of all that, coming to work in 2002, and still here today, was Dominic Mullen. Now our, the head professional here. I'm so happy for him. So I, I it, it's, you know, I love to work with the committees here at Round Hill. You get to know the people better. And it's just, it, it was fun. It really, really was fun. When I came to work every morning, when I got to the entrance to Round Hill, I said, okay, Al, turn that smile on, you're going to work. And, and, and it was fun, it was fun. You know, starting out, back in 1965, it was a little rough. We had some, some rough hurdles through there. But when I turned 50, a lot changed for the better for myself and the smile endures, and it was clear as we drove out to the Alamo Cooper Bridge today uh, with the players cheering and clapping and, and saying congratulations, Al. I think the, the legacy endures as well. I think Dominic put them up for their I am not sure about that. No, they, they're, they are, there are so many wonderful memories. So, so many. It's, it's just, it's awesome. It's an example of the lives yeah, that you touch. Yeah, yeah. Now again, congratulations oh, uh, to you, to Diane, to the family, uh, on behalf of the, of the nominating committee and the entire Northern California PGA. Congratulations to your induction into the Hall of Fame. Thank you. I'm, I'm totally honored. I mean, I, I really am. And if I might just mention one thing, I'd like to also thank the round.
Brownsville membership for everything they've done for me. Working for years has been fabulous. You know, if you have a great place to play, you can become a better player. Anyway, they were they were wonderful, and I, I owe an awful lot to them. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Al Kruger.